natural function, y is equal to c to the power of x. The function f of x is equal to c to the power of x, where c is a positive real number different from 1, is called exponential function in base c. This function describes exponentially increasing and decreasing situations depending on whether the base is greater or less than 1. Okay, so if the c is greater than 1, it's increasing, and if the c is less than 1, but greater than 0, then it's decreasing. Let's have a look at that on the graphing machine. If we have y is equal to 2 to the power of x. If we graph that, okay, it just increases like this. Let's say less, you know, less than 1, like let's say it's 1 half, something like that, is decreasing. You have 1 half to the 0, that's 1, but 1 half to the power of 1 is going to be a half, right? And 1 half to the negative 1 is going to be the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2, so that's why it does that. All right, let's see what happens when our c is equal to 1. And remember, 1 to the power of anything is 1. So we end up getting a nice horizontal line. That's why we're saying it's not equal to 1, but it's less than 1. Like, say, 0.1, that's less than 1. Okay, we have a nice, steep, decreasing function. But when y is greater than 1, like 3, we get that. Okay, the other thing they're saying is we're going to be interested in this e to the power of x. Okay, which kind of looks like this. Now, e. So we get these two functions. We have the increasing function when c is greater than 1, and we get a decreasing function when c is between 0 and 1. Okay, and the most common basis for the exponential functions are the numbers 10 and e. e is an irrational number. It means it goes on and on forever without repeating. Okay, there's no pattern repeating. It has no end, right? So, and it can't be written as a fraction, so that's why it's irrational. So it's an irrational number that occurs in phenomena related to physics, biology, calculations of probabilities. Okay, and we already looked at uh, e, y is equal to e to the power of x. Okay, but what is e? So let's have a graph. And what we're doing is I'm going to look at um, money over time. Okay, so let's say you have a dollar. That dollar is going to, let's say you invested it in something where that dollar grows at 100% annually. Okay, so at the end of the year, you still have your original dollar, but you get another dollar. After two years, you still have your dollar, your dollar that you had at the end of the one year, doubles, so you get a new green one. And this green one is going to remain, so here's our, our green one, but that green one is going to grow a whole other dollar, the red one. And then that's going to happen again. So this is going to be the same blue one. It's going to produce a new green one, like that. Okay, this green one is going to remain, okay, but it's also going to produce a new one. When the green produced a new one back here, it became red. So it's going to make a new red one, like that. This green one, it's going to be here, okay, so that green one's still around, and it will produce a new red one as well, okay, like that. Now this red one will still be around, okay, but it will produce a new purple one. Notice at time zero, we have one. At time one, we have two. At time two, we have four. And at time three, we have eight. And notice this is y is equal to two to the power of t, or f of t is equal to two to the power of t. So two to the power of three is eight. Two to the power of two is four. Two to the power of one is, is two. Is, is two. And two to the power of zero is one. All right, and we can think of this as the, as the 2 as like 1 plus 100 percent increase. So it's a 1 plus 100 percent to the power of t. 1 plus whatever our return is to the power of t. So it doesn't have to be 100 percent. It can be whatever our return happens to be. So we get this nice little formula. Here's the issue though, is when money doubles like this, what happens is you could compound it, you could, you could look at the money at various points in time, and you can compound it at those points of time. So let's say we're looking at one year, okay, so 12 months, and it doubles in 12 months. But if that interest is compounded every six months, we get a different story, okay? Because what's happening is you start off with your dollar. At the end of six months, you still have your dollar, right? But that dollar has produced, right? Because remember, it's doubling in 12. So it's going to produce about 50, it's going to produce 50 cents in six months. So we have like, you know, so think of it, this as like, there's 50 cents emerging from this dollar. So this one dollar has produced the dollar and it's produced the 50 cents. Now at the end of the year, you still have your dollar. This 50 cents, right, you still have that 50 cents, but this dollar has produced a new 50 cents, right? So 
this 50 cents added to the new 50 cents that this produced gives you a dollar. Okay, and then this 50 cents is going to give you 25 cents. Okay, so this 50 cents is going to produce 25 cents. So in all, you have 225 at the end of the year. By compounding the interest at six months, we end up with 25 cents more than we expected, right? So we end up with 225 instead of two. If we look at our, our growth function, we have growth is equal to one plus 100%, but we're, we're not getting 100%, we're getting 50%, okay? And we're doing that twice, right? So we're getting 50% 50%, and look what happens. So if we do that, we have like 100% is one, so we have 1 plus a half, which is 1.5 squared, is 2.25, as predicted. We have a nice formula. Growth is equal to 1 plus 100% divided by n. So how many times you're compounding that? n, once again, is the number of times you're compounding. So n is the number of growth times, or the number of compoundings that you're doing. Let's look at this thing again, but instead of looking at it uh, compounded twice, let's look at it compounded three times. So every four months. Okay, so at four months, eight months, and 12 months. So in this case, our n is going to be three. We're gonna have three compounds. So we start off with a dollar. At the end of four months, we will have grown one third of a dollar. One third, like 33.33333 cents. So that's one third, and that came from your original dollar. After eight months, you still have your original dollar. You still have this 33 cents, but you're gonna get a new 33 cents, which is gonna add on to that. So you're gonna have 66 cents. So the 66 cents is coming from 33 cents from your dollar, but also this 33 cents that we already had. This 33 cents is also going to grow a dividend. We're going to get a third of this 33 cents, which is 11 cents, or like one-ninth of a dollar. After 12 months, after a year, we still have that dollar. That dollar is going to produce 33 more cents, which is going to get added on to that 66. Okay, so 66.6 repeating, which is a full dollar. The full dollar is going to come from 33 cents from here, 33.3 repeating cents from here, and 66.6 repeating cents from there. We have the full dollar, plus the 66 cents is going to give a dividend. So we're going to get one-third of the 66.6 repeating cents, and that's going to give us 22.2 repeating cents. Plus, we're going to add that on to the 11 cents, so that's going to give us 33 3 repeating cents. Then we're going to get a third of the 11 cents, and that's going to give us point, point one, 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 divided by 3. Okay, so it's, gonna, it's giving us really 0 0.37037037. 0 0 I'm just going to round that up to 0 0.04 just for simplicity's sake, like that. If we add that all together, you have 1 plus 1 plus 0.33 plus 0 0.04, so the 33 is one-third, the point zero four is really 127. You can come back here, we can say, look, we have a third, and then this is two-thirds, and this is one-ninth, this is one-third, and we have one-third of one-ninth is 127. That's where we're getting the 127th from. So if we add all that together, I'm gonna make common denominator of 27, so my one is 27 over 27, plus 27 over 27, plus if I multiply the bottom by nine and the top by nine, I get nine twenty-sevens plus one twenty-sevens. All together, that gives us 64 out of 27. And if we run that through our handy-dandy calculator, 64 out of 27 is 2.37037. So we're getting approximately 2.37 just because we compounded more. So the question you're probably wondering is, what happens if we compound like infinitely? Like what if we compound once a second even? we end up getting more than this? Let's have a look at that. Also, if we use this formula, so we have one plus 100% divided by three to the power of three, because n is the number of compounds, the number of growth times that we're looking at, we end up getting one plus one third to the power of three. And so this is three thirds plus one third is four thirds, four thirds to the power of three. Cube the four, that gives us 64. Cube the three, 27, 64 over 27, look familiar? The same number, 2.37. Let's do it again, but let's compound four times. So we start off with a dollar. At the end of our first compound, we're going to get one quarter of a dollar, like 25 cents. But I've just written one quarter. It's almost it's impossible to see, but that says one quarter. At the end of six months, we're going to have that one, which came from here. And that one is going to give us another quarter, which we're going to add on to that quarter, which is going to give us a half. So we have a half 
of a dollar. Also, this quarter is going to produce another quarter of a quarter, which is a sixteenth. We're going to end up with a sixteenth right here, which came from this one. After nine months, we still have our dollar, and that dollar is going to produce another 25 cents, or another quarter, which we're going to add on to the half, which is going to give us three quarters. We have three quarters of a dollar. This one half, we're going to get a quarter of the one half, which is going to give us an eighth, which we're going to add on to our sixteenth. Now an eighth is two sixteenths, so we end up with three sixteenths. So this is our three sixteenths. Our one sixteenth, we're going to get one quarter of that. That's going to give us a sixty-fourth. So we have one sixty-fourth. That's impossible to see, but it says one sixty-fourth. At the end of a year, we're still going to have our original dollar, which came from here, and then we're going to have a quarter of that is going to get compounded again. It's going to be added on to the three quarters, giving us another dollar. So we have another full dollar. So this three quarters, we are going to get one quarter of the three quarters. So that's three sixteenths, which we're adding on to our three sixteenths that we already have. So that gives us six sixteenths, which reduces to three eighths. We have three eighths of a dollar here. This three sixteenths, we are going to end up getting a quarter of that. So we're going to get 3 64ths, which we're going to add on to this 1 64ths, giving us 4 64ths, which is 1 16th. So there's our 1 16th, and that came from the red dude and from the purple dude. Our 1 64th here is we're going to get 1 quarter of that, and that is going to give us 1 256. So 1 256. All right, and that's it. We add all those together, we end up with 1 plus 1 plus 3 8 plus 1 16th. Okay, 1 plus 1 plus 3 eighths plus 1 16th plus 1 256th. I'm just going to crank those out on the calculator. 1 plus 1 plus 3 eighths plus 1 16th plus 1 out of 256 is equal to 2.4414. So compounded four times, we end up getting 2.4414.0625. Let's see if our handy dandy function is. So we're going to say 1 plus 100%, which is 1. So 1 plus 1 over 4 to the power of 4. That is going to give us 1 plus 1 quarter. Well, the 1 is 4 quarters plus 1 quarter is 5 quarters. So we have 1 plus 1 quarter. So 5 quarters or 1.25 to the power of 4. And on our handy dandy calculator, 1.25 to the power of 4 is 2.44140625 as predicted. So the next thing we want to look at is, well, let's take this function, we'll put it in a spreadsheet, and we'll see what happens when it really starts to crank. If we're looking at n, and here we're going to look at the function, we're going to have in brackets 1 plus 100%, which is 1 over n, all to the power of n. So if we start off with n being 0, over here we're going to say it is equal to, I'm just going to copy this function, and I'm going to write equals, and all that. I'm just going to, where it says n, I'm just going to click there, and it's going to say a2. Oh, didn't get rid of my n, to the power of a2, like that. So we'll start off with 1, and we'll go up, and make that increase by 1, this is 2, and fill that down. And remember what this means, this means like with one compound. We're compounding the interest once, at the end of the year we get, we get $2 if we're starting off with one dollar and we have 100% growth. Well, our growth is we're doubling, but if we compound it twice, we get 225. If we compound it three times, so I'm just gonna fill this down and look what happens. If we compound it three times, 2.37, four times, as we saw, 2.4414, five times, 2.48832, six times, look what's happening. It's not getting much higher. It's getting closer and closer to 2.7. Instead of going up by one, I'm just gonna multiply whatever I had here by 10. Okay, so this becomes 100. I'm going to fill that down, and look what's happening. If we have 1,000 compounds, it's 2.7169. If we have 10,000 compounds, 2.718. Okay, and hey, I wonder what that value of E is. E is 2.7182818, and look what we're getting. Okay, so the higher our value goes up, we're getting closer and closer and closer to E. As the number of compoundings, n, approaches infinity, like we have here, notice what happens, that our growth becomes E. So the way we'd say that in math, we would say that as the limit of this function, 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n, as n approaches infinity, the limit of this thing approaches E. Notice as we got bigger and bigger numbers, we got closer and closer and closer to the value of E. So the number of E is the maximum possible result when compounding 100% growth for one time period. So if you compound it as much as you can, you're gonna get 
E as a maximum possible result. All right? And that's where E comes from. So if we start with, and here's a couple of things, if we start with a dollar and compound continuously at 100%, you're gonna, the result will be 1E. If you start with $1, you're going to get 1E back. If you start with $2, you're going to get 2E back. If you start with $7.45, you're going to get 745 so that's the maximum you can get back, We're talking about 100% growth, compounded maximally. All right, what if we grow at 50% annually instead of 100%? Is E still involved? Well, let's have a look at that. I'm going to use our handy dandy growth formula, 1 plus 50% this time instead of 100% over N to the power of N. And I'm going to pick something nice that's going to reduce with this 50%. So I'm going to pick like N is equal to 50. I could have picked N is equal to 500. I could have picked anything that's going to reduce nicely. So I don't end up with a, you know, a fraction here that I don't want. So if I pick 50, I could have picked 500, I could have picked 250, but pick 50 and look what happens. So the 0.5 divided by 50, that's like 1 over 100. So if I double the top, double the bottom, you get 1, 1 over 100 or 100 to the power of 50. Now remember that if you had like 1 plus 1 over 100 to the power of 100, that approximates E. We could say this is basically the same thing, except here I have an exponent of 100, here I have an exponent of 50. Well, I can make this 100 into 50 by dividing it, this by 2, or by taking, you know, by multiplying this exponent on this side by a half, right? Or dividing this exponent by 2. So we end up getting 1 plus, yeah, I've, I've taken my 0 0.01, I've written it as 1 over 100, same thing, just so we can compare. So what I've done is I've divided this exponent by, by 2, and so I had to divide the exponent over here. Now e is really like e to the power of 1, right? So I've divided the 1 by 2. So we end up with 1 plus 1 over 100 to the power of 50 is really e to the 1 half. Can we still use e? Absolutely. Notice this is half of 100% e to the half. What if we grow at 300% annually instead of 100%? Can we still use e? So it's the same experiment. So 1 plus 300% over n to the power of n, and I just want to divide by anything that's going to go into the 300% nicely. I could divide by 300, I could divide by 600. So I'm going to just pick 600 just for fun, just to show you that it didn't really matter as long as it just nicely divides the the 300%. Okay, so I have 3 over 600, which is going to reduce to 1 over 200. So I picked n is equal to 600 just for fun. 1 plus 1 over 200 to the power of 600. I know that 1 plus 1 over 200 to the power of 200 approximates e. Now, what do I have to do to the 200 to make it into 600? Well, I'm going to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply this exponent by 3. I'm going to multiply the exponent that's on top of the e, which is really a 1, right? So I'm going to multiply that by 3. So I end up getting, multiply this side's exponent by 3, multiply that side's exponent by 3, there you go. Or I'm taking, or I'm cubing the left-hand side and cubing the right-hand side. In any event, we end up getting e to the power of 3. And notice this is 3 times 100%. We know that if we're growing at 300% annually, our growth rate is e to the power of 3. What if we grow at k times 100% annually instead of just 100%? Now we're cutting to the chase. Can we still use e? So the same thing. So 1 plus k over n to the power of n. And then for n, I'm just going to pick some multiple of k, like, I don't know, 100k. It doesn't have to be huge, but remember, with bigger numbers, it, your approximation of e gets closer and closer to e. So that's why I picked 100 times k. So if I picked 100 times k, we end up getting, okay, these two k's are going to reduce, and we're going to end up with 1 plus 1 over 100 to the power of 100k. Okay, and I know that 1 plus 1 over 100 to the power of 100 approximates e, right? So to get that 100k, I just have to multiply this exponent by k and that exponent by k. Now remember, e is really e to the power of 1, so I multiply the 1 by k. So we end up getting, okay, 1 plus 1 over 100 is equal to 100 times k is equal to e to the power of k, okay, which proves that this is e to the power of k, all right? And that gives us a nice formula. So our growth is always e to whatever rate we're talking about. If you're talking about annual growth. Now, what if we had 300% growth for two years? We'd multiply one year's growth, e to the power of three, by itself. So you get e to the power of three times e to the power of three, which is e to the power of six. Or we could just say, look, it's e to the power of three, two years to the power of two. Look at that. So we end up with this nice formula that our growth is e to the power of rate times time. So that's where this formula comes from. If you like, you can put it in as f is the final amount is equal to the principal times e to the rt. Because remember before we were talking about way back here, if we started with a dollar, 
and compounded continuously, we'd get one E back. If we start with $2, we get two E back. If we started with $7.45, we get $7.45 E back. If we're talking about one year's growth, this is like the principal amount. That's the P that we're talking about. The final amount is equal to the principal amount times E to the power of R. T, where R is rate and T is time. Okay, so we get a nice little function there. So F is the final amount, P is the principal amount, that's the, the amount you start off with, you, you originally invest, or the amount you start off with. R is the rate and T is the time.